Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video and after the latest from the live radar room for the latest weather warnings as we have got an update today and as expected those warnings have been extended westwards through Friday and Saturday to cover more parts of England and Wales as we are going to see some severe thunderstorms over the next few days. We'll have a look at the latest UKV, looking at all in detail as we are going to be seeing those showers and storms moving in through Friday night and through Saturday as well. We've seen some storms earlier on today in the west and we are going to see perhaps an even more severe batch of storms, especially further eastwards as we head through Friday night. Temperatures as well are going to be very warm. You may have noticed today it was very humid and warm outside. That humidity arrived yesterday but the top temperatures did start to really perk up this afternoon around 26 or 27 degrees and it could be even warmer tomorrow as there is the risk of seeing a 30 degrees somewhere in the east. It is all dependent though on cloud amounts and how early to the first signs of those storms. Uh, we expected the most severe storms after sunset around the midnight period but into the afternoon we're expecting cloud to bubble up so that could prohibit those temperatures a little bit through tomorrow afternoon. Into Saturday, still lots of storms around and again temperatures could touch 30 degrees in the best spots. A slight cool down through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, but into next week, see those temperatures getting even warmer once again. Not expecting anything into the 30s at this stage, but definitely back into the mid to high 20s, looking very pleasant and hopefully drier with more high pressure involved. And we are starting to see signs, potentially of another spike of heat from the longer range charts. Not all consistent with their sort of timings and severities, but all starting to show the risk of southerly winds re-emerging. And the GFS operational run today does go for probably the hottest run we've had so far this summer, getting 35 degrees for southern areas as we head into the final third of June. So we'll look at that in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And now start on the live radar. You can see the remnants of those showers and storms that did spread into the southwest earlier. And now through the Irish Sea, Northern Ireland, heading into Scotland. Now more in just a clump of pretty heavy rain, uh, less so in the way of storms as it's all started to fizzle away. Uh, again, this was expected and we are going to see this continuing to shift northwards overnight tonight. As I said, not a lot of storm activity, but could still dump a lot of rain through this evening. Elsewhere, we've avoided the storms in the east. It's been another very warm day. Temperatures up towards the mid to high 20s, and you can see the temperatures peaking to the east of all that cloud and rain. Further westwards, it's still humid and has still felt warm this afternoon after the rain, um, but you can see it is quite a bit cooler, and the legacy of cloud there has held those temperatures back just a little bit. You can see, though, where the heat is across much of northern Europe. We are on the peripheries of that heat uh, and that means that we're going to be seeing the storms as we've got a bit of a mix. We've got the heat but also the instability and that's what we could see uh, bringing some pretty explosive activity through tomorrow evening. Now to look at the weather warnings we have a rain warning issue for Northern Ireland at the moment. It does expire very soon, about half an hour as I'm recording this, um, so we get, uh, not expecting any, uh, too much more in the way of rain from this, but many of those areas across Northern Ireland, through Wales and Southwest England, have seen a good few tens of mils of rain over the past few hours and last sort of 12 to 24 hours in general. Into tomorrow, though, we now have two warnings issued for thunderstorms. That one in the east from 3 p.m. until 6 a.m., uh, this is the same warning that was issued yesterday uh, and hasn't been updated today. Could be updated in the morning. I do suspect it perhaps could be adjusted, maybe even escalated from the looks of the latest runs. But again, we'll run for it quickly. We're looking at 30 to 50 millimetres in some of the most severe spots. Um, and yeah, could be some large hail, gusty winds and frequent lightning. As I said, expecting the severe band of storms to move through around midnight but there could be storms before it and could be storms after that and it, that, that sort of main band that will move through quite quickly but could be torrential as it does arrive and then this broader warning further westwards for wales much of southwest england from 6 p.m until midnight tomorrow so only a six hour period again we're looking at thunderstorm activity potentially 20 mils of rain in an hour 
30 to 40 millimeters in a few hours. More scattered storms here. We'll look at perhaps an organized band on the eastern flank of this small system that does develop with more scattered, unorganized storms further westwards, but still could be as severe in those areas. And then into Saturday, still have that warning in the east, but then have a more extensive warning further westwards, as once that system moves northwards, that small bit of instability, we could see further storms initiating on the western edge through much of Saturday. Again, we're looking at 10 to 20 millimetres in a few spots in an hour, 30 to 50 millimetres, and even perhaps some could see 60 to 80 millimetres from Friday through to Saturday. Strong winds and hail could ac accompany those storms. So do now have a look at the latest UK view. We are seeing consistency now on those positions of those storms. So we have got a good chance of forecasting quite well now. As we've said over the past few days, it has been chopping and changing in positioning quite a bit. But you see the showers and storms clearing through earlier this afternoon and overnight tonight complete, completely clearing away. Into tomorrow doesn't look too bad initially, but in the first signs of showers and storms approaching the southwest, initially just some heavy rain, but we start to see some more reds, especially in the eastern portion of southern England through around sunset, and they start to really move in, and as I said, around that midnight period is where that severe band of storms moves through those eastern portions, some really dark reds there. Again, it's a thin band, perhaps a line convection sort of system appearing now it's a line of storms moving through um, looks very well organized further westwards some heavy showers and storms not so organized though more scattered as those clear northwards that band of storms clears northwards through the early hours of the morning and then perhaps we start to see some further storms breaking out you see a bit of an arc here as, as it's around the area of instability again Locally, these storms could become organised, but you see lots of scattered sort of intensity among these showers and storms. So again, some areas could see very little, others could get uh, yeah, absolutely dunked in rain. Beyond that, those storms move northwards, and then again, through Saturday, scattered storms appear on the southern and western flank, and eventually all starts to die away into Sunday. It goes fresher, but remains warm in the south. So you can see pretty much starting Friday afternoon through all of Friday night and much of Saturday, we're going to see quite a lot of storm activity. Definitely some peaks and troughs in there, especially Friday night's going to be very intense. Early Saturday starts to die away. And then again, Saturday afternoon could reinitiate with that storm activity. So a lot of England and Wales are going to be affected by this. Not all going to see a direct hit from a big thunderstorm, but perhaps all indirectly going to be affected either by the big clouds around or at least seeing some rain from these thunderstorms. Now to look at the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon temperatures peaking around 26, 27. Into tomorrow could just to get to around the 29 or 30 degree mark in the east, but again it depends on how early to the cloud and the first signs of storms approaching from the south. Into Saturday again could be 27, 28 in the far east, but again all depends on the humidity levels, um, how much that warm air gets washed away by those storms. And you see into Sunday quite a bit cooler, low 20s, high teens, as we see fresher air emerging from the west. But by Monday, starting to increase again, 24, 25, 26. Similar for Tuesday, maybe even nudging to 27 or 28. So not oppressive heat next week, but getting back to those mid to high 20s after a bit of a lull through Sunday and maybe into Monday. Uh, but yeah, even by Monday afternoon, it's starting to pick up quite a bit there. Now, I do just want to show you the Arome run. Not really going to give us any further insights, but just give some backing behind the UKV as we are seeing good cross-model consensus now. See, so Friday evening, those showers approach, and again, very similar to the UKV, big band of intense thunderstorms in the east, really dark reds appearing in there. Could be really severe as that clears through London, the southeast, through East Anglia. It looks really horrible, that system. Further west was more scattered storms, eventually clearing northwards as we head through Saturday. So really, the main system is that eastern portion. It does move through quite quickly. It's not a slow moving band, but my gosh, it looks organized and severe. Normally these bands are much thinner um, and not quite as bulky and intense as this, but yeah, this looks like a really severe band. I'll be very interested to see what this looks like on the live radar as it approaches tomorrow evening.
But as I said, widespread storms. Make sure you stay safe out there over the coming days. Now, as we progress into the longer term, I don't suspect this will be our last outbreak of storms for the next couple of weeks. As you can see, low pressure moves through through Sunday, bringing slightly fresher air in. But eventually, high pressure re-emerges, turns it warm and dry for next week. But nothing too hot at this stage. As I said, mid to high 20s is possible. But we're not expecting anything, you know, 30 degrees plus, at least next week. Beyond that, though, we start to see around the sort of day 8, day 9, day 10 portion, so the end of next week into the following weekend, that's where we could start to see those temperatures starting to pick up, and the GFS today finishes exceptionally hot with southerly winds. So it doesn't look exceptional here on the pressure charts, but look at those upper air temperatures by the end of this run. The 20 degrees firm pops its way into southern England, and my gosh, it looks intense and again, if we zoom in to those two metre temperatures, if we run it back, you can see by the end of next week, still looking at mid 20s, uh, you know, either side of kind of 25 degrees most days. Saturday, 27, Sunday, 29, 30, next Monday, 28, 29, 28, the Tuesday, Wednesday, 29, getting to the 30s though by next Thursday or so a week uh, or just under two weeks time 30 31 and then look at this 34 35 and could be as high in the following days and even 40 degrees is being seen across northern France so GFS the most intense run we've seen so far this summer normally I'd look at this and say no chance this is going to come off but given what we've seen over the last three or four years you cannot rule this sort of scenario out. So we'll be very interested to see if we see some consistency from these runs. We'll look at the ensembles at the end of the video, and it is an outlier. But in the grand scheme of runs recently, it's not that much of an outlier. It's not completely out of the realms of possibility. Now, if you check out the latest GM, again, low pressure moves through, high pressure builds back in. And eventually, as we head towards the end of next week, southerly winds try to re-emerge. But it's more of a burst of heat. 50 degree ice firm moves in for a couple of days before eventually low pressure sweeps back in. So it could be hot and humid back for you know two or three days. But it could be a scenario similar to this week where those storms do re-emerge and sweep the hot air away. And finally, if we could check out the latest ECM, though, again, low pressure moving through at the moment, high pressure building back in, dry and warm for much of next week. And again, finishes with southerly winds, the 15 degree ice firm moving in, but very quickly gets swept away by low pressure. So all three runs bringing very hot air back in within the next 10 days or so. Easy the FGM, more of a plume for two or three days like we're seeing right now. Potentially thunderstorms clearing, but probably would be hotter than it is now because we are another week or two into summer. And of course, the ground temperatures are warming up. We've had a fairly cool kind of middle portion of spring, nothing too exceptionally warm. So the ground isn't terribly warm, uh, but it is warming up now quite rapidly. So I suspect these sort of upper air temperatures could deliver high 20s, maybe low 30s come next week and the week after. But yeah, GFS definitely the most intense run today. And you can see that from the ensembles. Big spike in heat at the moment with big precipitation signal for those storms through Friday night. Big drop off into Sunday and then kind of hovering average to above average over the next kind of five days or so, generally mid 20s. Beyond that, though, we're starting to see signs of some spikes in heat and you can see the operational run really spiking in the longer term, up towards the 20 degree ice firm, I said mid 20, uh, mid 30s, sorry, will be seen there. Most runs though, remain above average, remain very warm and very pleasant. And look at that, looking pretty dry as well, which I think is the best thing. Look at the dew point, you can see very warm dew points, very hot and humid, and again, aiding the thunderstorms at the moment, showing how much moisture in the air drops off. So perhaps a bit of a, a drier heat as we head into next week, which definitely uh, I would prefer personally. Uh, it gets a little bit oppressive and stuffy at the moment, but you can see there are some humid runs still out there. And finally, if we compare it to the ECM WF, broadly very similar, big spike in heat at the moment with those big precipitation spikes dropping off next week and then picking up again longer term and a stronger clustering around day seven, day eight there for warm air masses to emerge around the 13, 14, 15 degree mark. So getting towards the 30 degree mark, probably at the surface, nothing exceptional like 20 degrees, but definitely warm enough to potentially put us on the road to an official heat wave, i.e. temperatures in London 
for example, exceeding the heat wave threshold, which is 28 degrees for three days on the trot. We are technically just about touching heat wave thresholds in this period we're seeing now, but it's not terribly widespread. You know, not everywhere seeing it because of the cloud and storms. And we are seeing fairly variable temperatures. One day will be 28, 29, the next maybe 26 because of storms. So perhaps something more in tune with a classic heat wave there as we head into the middle of the second half of June. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, we'll know more details nearer the time. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you stay safe over the coming hours and days. I'll keep you updated, of course, with those storms. And I'll see you again for another video soon.